introductions. It's now time for member statements. The member from Perth, Wellington. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm pleased to inform the House that the FIT contract for the Conestoga Wind Energy Project has been terminated, effectively ending the project. There is nothing, this is nothing less than a victory for those who do not want industrial wind turbines imposed on their communities. It's a victory for the grassroots organizers who work tirelessly to preserve their neighborhoods, farms, and their way of life. They prevail over, over a multinational wind company as well as the Liberal government, whose process was rigged against them. That's extraordinary. It's also a victory for the municipality of North Perth and the township of Perth East. They stood with their constituents as unwilling hosts. I was proud to serve them at every step. I have repeatedly spoken up for them to two premiers, three energy ministers, two environment ministers, and to Invenergy itself. I hosted and attended public meetings and wrote to the government about 500 times. Tragically, the victory came at a cost. Individuals, families, and municipalities have spent considerable time and money. They will never get it back. Shame. All this could have been avoided if the government had just listened to us in the first place. We know the Liberals' Green Energy Act has been an absolute failure. This legislation put the Conestoga Wind Farm proposal in motion, dividing our community and pitting neighbour against neighbour. Now it is time to heal the rifts this project has, cost, has caused. I look forward to working with the community to help make that happen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements. The member from Windsor, Tecumseh. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, tis the break before Christmas, and all through this House, the members are thinking of turkey, not grouse. Up in the press gallery, I'll wager a bet. The scribes are all gone. You'll find no ink-stained wretch. Some members, some ministers, are either in hiding or making their way back to their writings. My supposition that here in the opposition we're sticking it out, still firmly believing we actually have clout. <laughs> and Speaker, we do, as I'm sure you have heard, we usually find a way to get in the last word. <laughs> Tis a wonderful season in this legislative place when we set aside our differences and actually are seen with a smile on our face. Oh, we may huff and puff and pretend real rages, always being careful not to scare our young pages. <laughs> yes, we can be persistent, but we'd really be lost. We'd really be lost without our legislative assistance. Speaker, even you, sir, you're quite the agreeable fellow, but you'd be lost if it wasn't for Clerk Miss Debbie Dummer. <laughs> <laughs> Not done yet. <laughs> Members will know I, I live near the American border, but I haven't yet heard the member for Windsor Tecumseh will please come to order. <laughs> order. Being here is quite an education. I'm learning more than I ever expected about time allocation. <laughs> so I better wrap up and be on my way. I'll see you on that February Tuesday after Family Day. Yes, here's where I'll be. Yours truly, the member from Windsor to Compsey. I can agree with most of what you said. <laughs> member Stevens, the member from Cambridge. Speaker, it's hard to top that one. I'm wondering if the member from Windsor to Compsey can sing the following. Children laughing, people passing, meeting smile after smile. The lyrics of the traditional song, Silver Bells, capture the spirit of the three annual Santa Claus parades in my riding of Cambridge. Hundreds of hours put in by many spirited volunteers make these much-loved parades continue to be a highlight of the holiday season for Cambridge and North Dumfries families. The Cambridge Santa Claus Parade, held at night, is a magical experience for children. It's organized by volunteer Dave Howell and over 35 dedicated community members. Parade goers assist others by bringing food for the Cambridge Self-Help Food Bank. Canada Post letter carriers picked up the children's letters to Santa. 
The Village of Air Parade is organized by volunteers from the North Dumfries Lions Club. The Air Paris Band, a favourite for over 125 years, kept the beat as I handed out the candy to the kids. Hespler Santa Claus Parade Marshals Peggy and Russell Bygrave, volunteers for over 30 years, stand out in white top hats and suits. Speaker, a sponsor summed up the reason that he volunteers. It's everybody, every business's duty to help support local traditions and build community. This is a great cause to support. Besides, we can't say no to Santa, can we? For generations of children and families in Cambridge, they would certainly agree. Thank you to all the Cambridge Parade volunteers. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Chatham, Ken Essex. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, in 1954, the Chatham Goodfellows embarked on its first annual campaign to ensure there's no child without a Christmas. Through donations and volunteer efforts, the Goodfellows have helped brighten many on Christmas morning, ensuring there are toys for children and food for a holiday meal. And recently, I was privileged to speak at their 60th anniversary and to see the large number of people in support of the work the Chatham Goodfellows do. It was very encouraging, to say the least. But on a sad note, Speaker, last month, $3,700 worth of toys slated to be given to local children in need as Christmas gifts were stolen from the Chatham Goodfellows. But on a happier note, and in the spirit of Christmas, volunteers were not discouraged, and they have received an outpouring of community support. Chatham Kent residents donated over 50 banana boxes full of toys and non-perishable food. And they raised, Speaker, over $35,000 in only a couple of hours during the Chatham Goodfellows 60th annual porch-like campaign. For one night, a small army of volunteers walked door to door collecting donations. Well, Speaker, back in the early 1960s, my father, Fred Nichols, was a good fellow. And he worked closely with his good friend and then president of the Chatham Goodfellows, Jay Vickers. I wasn't even a teenager when my father recruited me. I remember standing on the corner of King and Fifth Streets just outside the then Royal Bank selling Goodfellow papers to help raise money so that the Goodfellows could buy toys and put food in their Christmas baskets for the less fortunate families. Yes, Speaker, at a very young age, I learned how important in life it is to offer a hand up to those in need. Personal values were being instilled. I also remember, though, how cold uh, those wintry, snowy days were while I stood outside. Uh, but what I would do is I would go into the Goodfellows trailer parked on King Street to enjoy a nice heated drink of, yes, Verner's. Yes, I said heated. You should try it. You'll like it. It was good. And throw a cinnamon stick in while you're at it. So during the first 60 years of operation, thousands of volunteers from the Chatham Goodfellows have helped thousands of families. Despite the growth and success of the Chatham Goodfellows, the premise has always been and will remain no child without a Christmas. Thank you, Speaker. Welcome. Thank you. Member Simmons, the member from London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Housing first approaches to ending homelessness are founded on the principle that people are better, better able to move forward with their lives if they are first housed, then provided with the services and supports they need. Evidence demonstrating the effectiveness of Housing First is based on research, research primarily focused on men. But women's experience of homelessness is different. It is often invisible and frequently involves children. Women who experience homelessness have higher rates of mortality than men and are less likely to access resources and services. When they do access these resources, women are less successful in maintaining stable housing with success rates of less than 50%. To address these gender differences, an innovative collaboration is underway in my community of London to develop a Housing First strategy that responds to women's unique needs for re relational supports rooted in the neighbourhoods in which they reside. Called Homes for Women, this two-year project is funded by the London Community Foundation. Partners include the Canadian Mental Health Association Middlesex, My Sister's Place, Women's Community House and Health Zone Nurse Practitioner led clinic. The project will provide housing for 50 women with a variety of units scattered throughout the community. A housing
Housing Stability Worker will provide individualized supports in a 24-7 hotline. A housing coordinator will ensure coordination across the units and connection with community partners. Not only will Homes for Women improve women's ability to find and maintain stable housing in London, but it will also generate a new housing-first framework that can be shared across Canada to end homelessness among women. Thank you. The member from Mississauga, Brampton South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, recently I was at the opening of Mississauga Bus Rapid Transit Ways Phase 1 at the New Dixie Station in my great riding of Mississauga, Brampton South. Phase 1 is the end result of extensive planning and preparation by all levels of governments. Our government has invested $65 million towards resolving one of the most pressing issues, gridlock. Over the next three years, by 2017, 18 kilometers of transitway from east to west with 12 stations will become a reality. The transitway will be a great two-way artery facilitating movement of people, vehicles, commerce in and out of Mississauga. It is a complement to existing transportation routes and systems. It will integrate suburban areas with urban and encourage more use of public transit. I'm proud to be a part of a government that is taking action to solve the problem of gridlock. Great. And Mr. Speaker, this is a perfect example of what communities can achieve when all levels of governments work together. Thank you. I thank Speaker. I rise today to provide the Legislature and the people of Ontario with an end-of-session report card on the Liberal government. Uh -huh. With regard to working together, the Liberal government gets a failing grade. Way back when this uh, parliament first started, the government house leader asked for some cooperation between the opposition parties on getting consensus and getting some bills passed. And initially, it was four bills that the government wanted passed, then it went to six, and then it went to seven. We on this side were going to allow a number of bills to move forward quickly in the legislative process, but there were a few. Uh, that needed public input, such as the tow truck operators, the blood plasma companies, and also independent daycare operators. But what we learned was the government house leader's request to work with us was just a shallow promise. In fact, the corner office, the premier, shut us down at every opportunity to have those hearings. I can't believe that we can in this legislature sit down and get a few public, uh, private members' bills passed. In our caucus, we had Ryan's Law from uh, Mr. Urich, uh, Bill 20 that I think could have been easily passed from the NDP, Bill 17 in the name of the member for Hamilton East Stony Creek for child performers. There were a number of Liberal bills as well. Uh, there was a bill on Hispanic Heritage Month for the member for Davenport, uh, Ms. McMahon, uh, Ontario Bike Month, Mr. Quadri regarding radon awareness, and Mr. Potts on his tip-out bill. There was a lot of bills we could have cooperated on. As far as I'm concerned, the government received an F. Uh, one of the members uh, said that they believe Thank in you. transparency at only the right time. Well, you know what? The right Thank time you. has passed, and for that reason, they get a failing grade, Speaker. Thank you. The member from Scarborough, Agent Court. I'm pleased to rise today to recognize a young, talented Scarborough Agent Court resident, Satchel Patel, a former student at Stephen Lee Court Collegiate in his fourth year at Ryzen University, who I've known since 2006. For his final thesis project, Satchel and his fellow students at Ryzen School of Me Media are producing a Snow Queen 2014, a community benefit to support 519 Church Street Community Centre. Snow Queen is a live 60-minute holiday-themed production with drag and musical performances at Winter Garden Theatre that will take place tomorrow, December the 12th. For over 35 years, 519 has been working with the LGBTQ community to build a healthy, welcoming spaces to meet, participate, and uh, celebrating together. The production of S a Snow Queen received significant sponsorship from Ryzen University President Dr. Sheldon Levy and notable LGBTQ organizations. The students themselves also raised additional funds on their own to help to cover the cost of producing the show. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to congratulate Satchel Patel and all his classmates for producing Snow Queen 2014. Their dedication to the LGBTQ community in Toronto is an inspiration to all residents, especially the young people 
people in my riding of Scarborough Asian Court. And tomorrow, Mr. Speaker, I'm looking forward to seeing the production Snow Queen 2014. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Beaches, East York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and it gives me great pleasure to stand up as the last member statement of this section and to talk about something that's most appropriate, the Christmas tree lighting ceremonies I've had to enjoy. Recently, Mr. Speaker, I participated in your own Christmas lighting when we lit up lights across the country at a certain time when I was able to bring greetings on behalf of the Premier. I was delighted to do so. And then two weeks ago, two weeks ago I was down at uh, Danforth in, in Victoria Park at the East Lynn Park where, to, where the DECA, Danforth East Community Association, had its own tree lighting ceremony. We were entertained by a bunch of wonderful children. Uh, Angela Matich set up that, that, that facility. We had the Pegasus Studio, Zero Gravity Circus, lit up the lights. It was most inspiring. And that same day, Mr. Speaker, I went down to the foot of Ludi Avenue on the boardwalk in the beach. And there we had an incredible ceremony where we were to light up the Ludi Lighthouse. And of those of you who have seen my Christmas card, that's the Ludi Lighthouse with those wonderful trees in the background. Mr. Speaker, the DeClute real estate family for the last 10 years have been lighting up the beach, and it was an unbelievable event with Lena Boyd, the first lady of guitar, she and I singing, Here Comes Santa Claus. Oh, wow. And finally, there I was at Kew Gardens last week, Mr. Speaker, with the Beaches Lions Club. What an incredible organization doing such good work in our community and around the world. And there they, we were had joined by Mr. and Mrs. Claus. And I'll tell you, Mr. Speaker, all of these tree lighting ceremonies have certainly filled my heart with seasonal joy. And I'm looking forward so much to sharing this time with my community, with my family. And I want to wish all members a Merry Christmas, season's greetings, happy Hanukkah, and to all a good break. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It is now time for repeat.